Shalom. Uh, first, first and foremost, I'd like to say Kal Halal Yahawa, Wa Yahawa Shai, and double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and salutations to the elect, pushing his word in truth and sincerity across the four corners of the earth. I want to make this video. I'm going to make this video on um, this video is on uh, humble and being humble and uh, why why it's important to be humble in this truth. Uh, so I don't got too much scriptures. So I got like three scriptures, but I'm reading a couple like a couple verses in Sirach. This is Sirach chapter three verse seventeen, and it reads, "My son." Go on, Slake, my son, go on with thy business in meekness. So shalt thou be beloved of him that is approved. Now, you know, being in this truth, when you when you first get in this truth, you know, you want to, you, because you're young, you want to show everybody, you know, the enlightenment that you've been uh, given. You know, the, the wisdom you've been given, the knowledge you've been given. You want to show your loved ones, your family members, your friends, and basically bring this truth out to them. But, you know, as you grow older in this truth, you, you, you realize that this word is only, the truth is only for the elect. It is only for the elect. It doesn't matter how hard you try to break down the truth or how easy you try to make it for whoever it is you're explain, explaining it to, if they're not of the elect, they won't get the truth. Everything's given from the Most High. So the Most High has to first open their mind like the Most High opened our minds and gave us faith, those of us that, were since, that, that received the truth from the apostles, just the same thing, likewise. So, you know, the older you get, you know, because our business here on this, on this, in this kingdom, on this planet, is to serve the Most High. Actually, you know, matter of fact, let me get that real quick. The scriptures tells you that. Bear with me one moment. This is Ecclesiastes 12 and 12 and 12, and it says, uh, actually 12 and 13, I'm just going to get right to the point. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter, or I'll start from 12 real quick. It says, this is Ecclesiastes 12 and 12. And further, and further by these, my son, be admon admonished. Of making many books, there is no end, and much study is weariness to the flesh. Hence, why you have to have a balance. This is my point, verse thirteen. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh by Shai, and keep His commandments, for this is the duty, the whole duty of man. So that's that's our business, man. That's 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 what we're here on this planet to do. All right, the, those of us that are sincere and, and who are doing this work sincerely, that's that's our business, man. That's what we're supposed to do. So it says, my son, go on with thy business in meekness. Now, you know, even though we know our bosses are the devil, you know, if, if you have an Edomite, if you have an Edomite boss or if you got a Jake boss or a heathen boss, you know, they're not in the right they're, and they're not and they're not in this truth, then, you know, they're they're against you. But just because you know that doesn't mean you're going to go to your boss and start cursing them out and telling them they're going to slavery for, you know, and that their children are going to be destroyed, their family is going to be destroyed, such and such. You know, scripture said to be harmless like a dove and uh, to be as wise as a serpent and harmless like a dove, roughly paraphrasing. So when we go about our business, we should go about it in meekness, not in pride. Now, those, those other people at these churches... They go, they go about they, their business in pride, in proud, uh, in pridefulness. You can tell, man. You can, you can even just sense the aura, especially from the old, old folks. You know, and, you know the the men and women that are in their thirties or in their forties, fifties, and they're Christians. 
so-called Christians, they, they're the worst. You know, they, you can't tell them nothing. And, you know, we all have our own personal testimonies from that, you know, parents and uncles and fathers and whatnot, but they won't, they won't have, they won't, uh, they won't have it when you try to break down this truth to them, especially if they're not of the elect. So, you know, as you go older, you, you, you understand to just, just to speak the truth as you've been taught to just teach and whoever receives it will receive it. You know, we're just messengers. We're not, we, we can't save no one. We just speak and whoever gets saved and whoever gets sealed gets sealed. It's the most high who does that and his son. So my son, go with thy business in meekness. So shalt thou be beloved of him that is approved. Verse 18, the greater thou art, the more humble thyself, and thou shall find favor before the Lord. And that makes sense, man. That makes complete sense. You know, you know, in the world, you usually hear the saying that, you know, uh, the guy who talks a lot of, you know, part of my French, but the guy who talks a lot of shit is, the, is most likely the guy who's the, who's the weakest. The guy who's more calm and doesn't talk as much is the guy who's probably the strongest, right? Just like with, just the same thing with wise people, man. Wise people don't always have much to say. You know, it's foolish people who talk out of, who talk so much and it ends up, it ends up being them talking out of their asses. So, um, I'm going to read that again. It says, the greater thou art, the more humble thyself. And thou shalt find favor before the Lord. And you know what? This also, too, it makes no sense to me. Like, if you take the emotion out of all this, and you just think of this objectively and not subjectively, it makes no logical sense to be proud in this truth. It makes no logical sense. Because this was given to you from the Most High and His Son. It was given to you. You didn't earn this truth. You didn't work for this truth. It was given to you as a gift. This wisdom was given to you as a gift, as long as, uh, along with faith, was also given to you as a gift. So how can you be someone who was given this a gift without any works, or anything like that, given to you freely? Going to be proud about it. it? Makes no sense. Anything that's easily given to you can be easily taken from the Most High and His Son. Hence the scripture, many are called and few are chosen. Just because you're called, and just because you know you're an Israelite, you know, at this point in time now, it, it, it make you know, it really is not a big thing to know you're an Israelite now. Yeah, you might be able to break down a couple scriptures, but in the end of the day, at the point, at this point where we are now in this truth, in this kingdom, it's all about enduring to the end. You know, because at the end of the day, you know, like, you know, there's been a lot of men in GMS that I looked up to. A lot of men that I looked up to who have now fell out of the truth. So it really doesn't matter about, you know, you can follow at, after 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. You never know. So, you know, why not be humble every single day in this truth, man, until the end? Until you're in the chariots. It makes no sense to be proud in, in this truth when it was given to you as a gift. So the greater thou art, the more humble thyself, and thou shalt find favor before the Lord. It says many, and another example of this too is uh, um, uh, is uh, look at look at King David. King David was a perfect example of him uh, um, uh, being a humble man. You know, even though he had the power to kill um, Saul, he he didn't. You know, he humbled himself. All right, and there's many other uh, um, many other good examples in the scriptures of men that humbled themselves. You know, in this truth. Verse 19: Many are high, many are in high places, and of renown. But mysteries are revealed unto the meek. And that's true, man. Like, again, I'm going to get at these churches. Again, you pastors, you, 
you pastors that own churches that have a net worth of you know millions of dollars even you know, your big time pastors that have a net worth of a billion or two billion dollars you guys are in high places and and are of renown you guys are renowned men albert einstein all the different scholars and scientists are renowned men but none of them have the truth see what's given to us it says but mysteries key word here mysteries are revealed unto the meek what is what is what is uh, the mystery this truth the the, under, the complete and true understanding of the bible is a big mystery and has been a big mystery for a long time but now you know beginning with uh with apostle uh, actually really going before apostle har back to abba vivens you know and uh um Elder Yaikwab and uh, King Marshar, High Priest Ariar, and then on down to the apostles, you know, Apostle Kabar, I mean, Apostle Tahar, Apostle Kabar, Apostle Ramlab, you know, Apostle Rakar, you know, and the elders, and on down to us younger brothers, has now been revealed. This mystery has been revealed. But it's only been revealed to the meek, because the meek are the elect. The elect are the only people who are really going to be meek, because they understand the truth. Right, and even to this day, even though that this truth is pushed across the world, and it's you know out on the YouTube, and everybody knows about the Hebrew Israelites or what they like to call us, so-called Black Hebrew Israelites, you know, everybody knows about us and knows what we do, but still the truth is a mystery to everybody because only the elect truly understand the the word of the Lord. Now, let's look at that word meat to get a better understanding of what it's talking about. So, it says, gentle, quiet, unaggressive, benevolent, kind, courteous, humble, unassuming, which is beautiful because when you're meek, you're most of the time meek people and humble people are actually very wise. They don't assume things. A foolish person that talks out of his ass will assume everything and not actually get um, the crop, the proper, um, the proper understanding of whatever, whatever it is that he's assuming of, or she's assuming of. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, it just goes on to repeat itself, basically. Submissive, um, soft, pain, gentle. So, you know, a, a key word in here that I liked to take out of this was unassuming. Because even in the world, they say, um, when you assume, you make an ass out of you and me. Right? It's, 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 about, it's about reading what's in the scripture and just teaching what's in the scripture. Not assuming what this proverb might mean. Or it's like these pastors, is all they do, man. All they do is just assume some scriptures that they don't understand and they come across and they read it, they just assume what the what the proper breakdown might be. They don't actually go and do the research and study. And even if they try to, they couldn't because it's the most high who has to give you that. Yes, he has to give you this knowledge. Alright. Okay, so uh verse verse twenty and it says, For the power of the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yashai is great. And he is honored of the lowly. And that's beautiful, man, because um, it, it, it only makes sense for the Most High to show his power through the, through the weak. All right? Through the lowly. And the people that are lonely and weak and the meek of the world are the elect. And, and generally the Israelites. You know, and for you Israelites that sold out, you got to still uh, lowly and the weak. I mean, Esau's still above you, man. You're not meek no more, but Esau's still above you. But for the elect, those of us that are sincere, it's the mo it only makes sense for the Most High to choose us to show his power, man. Because mo all of us that are sincerely in this truth and are sincerely doing this work, 
when we were in the world before this, we all aspired to be something great, you know, just like every Jake does. It's just in your spirit. But, you know, really, we didn't really have much, you know, everybody gave up something to come in his truth, but you really didn't have much. It's not like you were a man like Jay-Z or the or Kobe Bryant or LeBron James or Will Smith. You weren't that you weren't on that kind of level to uh and then you gave all that up to come to the truth. You know, there's no way Jay-Z or or any of these guys would the Lord there's no way the Lord would use any of these guys to 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 do his work. Because those guys would have to give up everything that they have. Money, all the money, the status, okay, the women, everything to come in this truth. And they wouldn't do it because they don't have humble spirits or weak or meek spirits. But those of us that are sincerely doing this work, it was, it was, you know, it, we did it. We, we gave up everything. Everything that we had, the very little that we had, we gave it up. A good example is look at the... Look at, again, David. The Most High used David, a man that looked, he looked like, you know, he looked apart. He he didn't look like a man of war. He didn't have, you know, a great stature. Even so much so that when Samuel was looking for a new king to run over, uh, to rule over Israel, he didn't think it would be David, but the Lord told him that, roughly paraphrasing, man looks at the outward parts, but the Lord looks into the inward parts. That inward part is spirit, man. He's looking for that humble spirit, because only a humble person will be able to be. To, it will will be able. Only a humble person can be taught. Someone who's proud can't be taught anything, because they're proud. Nothing can get in through their heads. You know, and the, the Lord used David to take down Goliath, and that was that was a surprising thing. But the Lord showed His power through David. It's the same thing the Lord's doing through us right now, beginning with the apostles and the elders on down. And then he's really, really going to mag magnify that power of his when, you know, we get beamed up in the chariots and have our new bodies and come back down and start, you know, rearranging everything. You know, uh, uh, start establishing Yahushua's kingdom, which is by default given to Israel and the elect first among Israel. Okay, so I'll read it one more time. It says, For the power of the Lord, Yahweh, is great, and he is honored of the lowly. Seek not out the things that are too hard for thee, neither search the things that are above thy strength. And it takes, again, it takes a humble spirit to do this, to, 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 to practice this scripture. Because a proud man will try to go into everything, even, even when he knows it's too much for him to understand. They'll try to go into everything and try to get the understanding of it. There's a time. There's a timing to everything. The Most High, you know, reveals. Although the the scriptures do say um, we have an auction to know all things, you know, I still I still say it's a lot wiser to sincerely say you don't know something and to you know actually go and do the work and under and, and find the answer to what it is you don't know then just to proudly say that you know the answer when you really don't know these pa again these pastors and these christians do the exact do that exact same thing do that exact thing they talk about how much they know and how and how they read the bible from from from, from front to back i've been reading this bible for 35 plus years what can you tell me and they still don't know the name of the most high it's a shame. It's a damn shame. Y'all here, 30 years. We met someone on the highways the other week who was going to church for 10 years, religiously. 10 years. And he didn't know the name of the Most High. He didn't even know what Yahweh Shai looked like. He didn't even know that he was a dark-skinned man. And, it, you know, at first he was kind of proud about it. He wasn't really, you know, he was like, you know, that doesn't really matter. You know, he wasn't sincere, uh, he wasn't um, humble enough to say, you know, I sincerely just don't know. Eventually, he did get sincere after he knew that, what, after we explained to him how important it is to know the, the whole truth. But that's, he's a great example of, uh, he was a product of the church. 
That's where you get taught at these, because these churches, man, they don't have the full truth. And if you don't have the full truth, you just don't have the truth. It's that simple. Okay, uh, verse 22. But what is commanded thee, think thereupon with reverence, for it is not needful for thee to see with thine eyes the things that are in secret. And, you know, like, I, for one, personally know that the apostles and elders and even other brothers who have been in this truth longer than I have know things about these scriptures that I don't. And that, and I'm fine with that, man. I, that doesn't bother me one bit. Because I know every man has his lot. Every man in this truth has have their lot. All right, and 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 if you want to be, and if you want to be a part of that body, you have to be humble, man. You have to understand that this is just where the Most High puts you, and it's not like you know you're never gonna grow in this truth. You are gonna grow, but you're gonna grow according to the Most High's time, according to the Most High's will. So you know, stay humble and 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 stay humble and stay diligent, and the Most High will will increase uh, your your wisdom. Okay. You had examples of uh, people like Al Alize, or Gorilla, or also known as Gorilla Hebrew, who you know, he thought he he tried to come up against the apostles and thought he knew more than the apostles. He he thought he could say when the apostles were going off, and you know he got shut down, man. Every time he tried, he got shut down. And so you know that's an example of that, because the Most High has an order to these things, man. So understand your lot and be content with your lot, man. Be content. You should be happy that you even were given this truth. David in the scripture says, um, roughly paraphrasing that, you know, even if he was a door a doorkeeper in the kingdom of heaven, he would be happy with that. That's a humble. That's a humble heart, man. That's a humble spirit. So you know, that's that. Um. Oh yeah, you know, I did have a quick precept for when I did read, um, many are in the high places and of renown, but mysteries are, are, give, are revealed to the meek. The meek are the elect, and I just wonder, every, you know, it's a well-known scripture, but I'll, I'll read it anyways just to um, further explain, you know, what I was saying. Um, Amos 3 and 9, publish, oh, Amos 3... 3 and 7, so okay. It says, Surely the Lord Yahweh power will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets, the prophets, which his prophets are the elect. And those, like I said, those are the only ones who are going to be meek. Now it says, uh, verse 23, it says, Be not curious in unnecessary matters for more things are showed unto thee than men understand and um you know personally you know like me before i was in this truth i wanted to play uh i wanted to you know i had aspirations to pursue basketball and and, and play professional but uh you know coming to this truth i had to cut all that off now you know um, I still play a little basketball here and there just to keep me occupied once in a while, but it's, I, I do I do not take it as serious as I used to, as I, as serious as I used to because my main focus is this truth. My new love, you know, I used to say basketball was my one and only love, but my new love is this truth and doing this work. All right, and low willing, you know, I'm I'm, I'm of the elect. Sincerely, low willing, I'm of the elect, but this is my new love. So yeah, I might play basketball to to keep me occupied, but there's been times, man, like I, you know, where, where the where I, I got caught up into basketball and watching too much of it, and I got excited about it again while I was in this truth. The Most High, and I was playing, and I and I hurt my and I rolled my ankle really, really bad. And the Most High jacked me up, you know, and that kind of re that kind of set me back to to focusing to focus on this truth and to understand because. Yeah, you know, like when you watch these other whatever it is you 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 aspire to be, you look at all these other guys, these these uh your your so called your role models that were in the world that you looked up to, to do whatever it is that you wanted to do. You have to understand they don't have what you have, which is the truth. 
That's why it says, be not curious and unnecessary matters. Those things are not unnecessary. They're not going to save you. They have no necessity to them, especially for you. For more things are showed unto thee than men understand. So you're giving things, you're, you're giving this truth, and this truth is more than most men on this whole planet can understand. That's a beautiful thing, man. So, you know, it's good to remind yourself of those kind of things. Just keep yourself focused and humble, man, and appreciative. Because even a humble person is very appreciative. And you, and you can show your appreciation through your works. You know, I uh, I recently just heard that uh, two two camp leaders from Miami, um, the Miami camp, they fell out the truth because, you know, they had a problem with Apostle Dahara's order on three videos a week. 10 minutes or longer and that's sad man that's those are those are camp leaders you know like if it was a, a younger brother who just came to the faith okay you know you can kind of see that but camp leaders they should already be in that mode they should have been doing three to five already when they became leaders so showing you that they weren't humble because they got they had an order given to them by an elder by the apostles and they had a problem with it so they their pride, their, their pride uh, creeped in. And on top of that, they were not appreciative of this truth. Man, this thing is all about pushing the word. Why? How could you um, disagree when the, mo when, 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 when the apostle tell you to push the word even more? How can you disagree to that when that's what this truth is about? Is pushing, this is what, that's what we're about. That's our job description is to push this word. So really, he was just telling you to do your job and just do it even more. But like I said, man, you know, many are called and few are chosen. Um, verse twenty-four: For many are deceived by their own vain, by their own opinion, vain opinion, and evil suspicion hath overthrown their judgment. Now this is beautiful scripture because. Again, you pastors and you churches are, are are famous for this, man. You guys will put your own op vain opinion, okay, vain opinion on the truth, which makes no sense to put your opinion on the truth, especially, you know what, because, you know, I'm going to read it, you know, I'm going to read my precept. This is why it makes no sense to put your opinion on the truth because your opinion comes from your mind right and how you feel about something right so it says uh, Jeremiah 17 and 9 the heart is deceitful above all things which that word heart means uh, means uh, mind you know a matter of fact I'll look it up just to prove what I'm saying it goes back to the word lab which means mind so there you go you got you know Lab, but you know, the blue bed it has lave or leb. But uh, when you look those words up, the correct pronunciation is lob. Now it says, There you go, inner man, mind, will, heart, understanding, inner parts, mitts, mitts, heart of a man, soul, heart, mind, knowledge. Thinking, reflection, memory. So the word, the word heart means lab in the Hebrew. Now it says, and it so it says, the heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So you know, you being a man in this truth, how are you gonna, how are you gonna put your own vain opinion? on this truth this truth this word which is perfect you know that's why when you know when we're out there in the highways and byways and people ask us what do you think about the scripture we don't i don't think anything you know like again part of my friends the fuck what i think it's about what it says it's about what it is it's about what the truth is and what it says because again our opinions are vain and our minds are desperately wicked man we're in these bodies and we have Daily, we have wicked thoughts flowing through our mind, creeping in and out of our mind. So why would you rely 
on your mind something that's not even something that's corrupted your mind because it's in because we're in these flesh we're in this flesh our minds and our bodies are corrupted so why would you rely on that instead of relying on this word which is perfect and true and pure right it makes no sense so again it says um for many are deceived by their own vain opinion and you know what's a good example of that of that as well as john 3 16 that is a vain opinion and you churches and anybody else who believe it believes that scripture is uh means that the lord is coming for everybody no matter no matter if you're edomite or you're a heathen or you're a two or it's not two third if you're uh well even a two-third the most high is not coming to save the two-thirds he's going to kill you first destroy you first and then you'll be brought back in the kingdom through the elect but when you read john 3 16 without doing your homework you put you you know your you 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 put your own vain opinion on it and you're like, yeah it's talking about the world but then when you read acts 5 and 29 to 30 it tells it tells you that yahweh shai was slow uh was slew and hung on a tree and uh for the repentance of sins and the prince and the savior for israel so those if you don't have understanding those two scriptures would, would be contradicting themselves okay but the proper thing to say to yourself when you see something like that is to say, well, I just don't have the full understanding of the scriptures because the scriptures don't contradict themselves. Is that a you are wrong or the scriptures are wrong? And the scriptures are never wrong because it's the word of the Most High, which is perfect. It's the truth. It's the spirit of Yahweh Shai resides in these scriptures. So for many are deceived by their own vain opinion and an evil suspicion has overthrown their judgment. These guys have no judgment. They're just mockingbirds in the churches, man. That's why when you ask, when you see a Christian and you ask them, you come upon them, come up on them, and you ask them certain questions, varying questions, various questions about the scripture, they can't. They just regurgitate what their pastor told them, which just makes them a parrot or a mockingbird. They don't actually understand why the scripture means this or why it says this. Now, here at Great Millstone. Our apostles and elders make sure they teach us why we why the 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 uh, why uh, the scripture says this why it means this we understand make sure we understand not just hear it and then repeat it out on the highways and byways like these like these churches like these churches like these pastors teach their um, their con congregation to do you know we do our homework we we study and that's diligent man that's being humble. You know, because you don't know, these churches, man. You get these guys go into these churches, and they 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 go to about two sermons, and all of a sudden they think they know everything. And those two sermons didn't give them anything; just gave them a pile of shit when it comes to knowledge, and they think they know everything. Okay, so um, you know, with that, I'm gonna close. You know, I hit my point. I'm pretty sure I made my point about being humble. And why it is, and why it is uh, important to be humble. So I want to say, Kahala Yahawa, why Yahawa Shai. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. The salutation, peace and mercy to the elect, pushing this word into in truth and sincerity across the four corners of the earth, and also death and destruction to this wicked kingdom. Shalom.